All right. We are live. We'll see how long it takes for people to show up. Hello, everybody. Showing on up. Let's see how long it takes, everybody. No, 17 seconds. We'll see. Uh, one other person's here. Who we have got? I wonder who's here. Who's here? Somebody? Seven. Hi, from Minnesota. Hi, Gene from Minnesota. Um, Earl wins. I think he wins. He's first in line. First in the in the Bible study is Earl. Congratulations, Earl. Gene, hello. This is hello from Kansas. That's where I am. Uh, you're in a, in a basement. My wife's uh, sewing room-ish slash guest room. Anyway. Um, so welcome everybody. Hopefully everybody's getting pumped for, uh, the, uh, virtual conference that's happening this week. That's why Pastor Borkhardt is not here. I am Pastor Aaron Fenker. I am the Dean of Theology for Higher Things, uh, joining you the, today for Bible study. I was the leader yesterday. Facilitator is probably a better term. Uh, Bible study facilitator because um, this is more of a conversation I'll be doing it again tomorrow we are in Genesis so yeah um, I tend to just go uh, I have to tell this to my confirmands all the time is that um, you know raise your hand and if that don't work you might have to throw your catechism at me because otherwise I'll just keep talking so that's the the nature of the beast here so uh if you're aware of that so um just uh yeah interrupt with your questions i will get to them as soon as possible i, I kind of keep an eye on the comments so here we are um i believe we've reached somewhat close to a quorum um the proper amount of people is always um just me and I guess one other person would be enough. Two or three, right? That's how Jesus rolls. Um, so we will... We are in Genesis 27 today. Um, we are continuing the saga of Isaac and Jacob and Esau uh, and how things are not happy in the camp. Um, the patriarchs, as we will see, are sinners. So... We, um, that's what we're finding out in our text today. So without any other me just rambling about nothing, as fun as that might be, depending where my brain goes, we shall reserve ourselves to the text here. Let's get that going. Bible study. There we go. There's the text for everybody. Um... So we'll kind of do it this way. All right. And uh, let's see here. 27 verse 1, it happened that Isaac was old and that um, his eyes were dim from seeing. And he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son, and he said to him, um, Hanani, here I am. Looky here. Is what Esau says. Um, and he says, Look now, I'm old. I do not know the day of my death. So um, Isaac is old and he can't see. This plays into the story later on. And uh, he doesn't know when he's going to die. So he's got some things to do to set in order before that day. So. Did the video freeze? Uh-oh. Am I frozen? That would be problematic. Can somebody confirm for me, please? Am I still here? Are you still seeing me? Am I still moving? Can you hear me? See me? Do you want to see me? Now that's the question. Can somebody... If so, I can probably fix it here. We will wait and see. 
waiting for a comment, I might have frozen. It's okay, okay. It's okay here, good to go. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Because I am in uh, Kansas, so the internet here is, well, you know, a little bit spotty at times. So Isaac's old, can't see. He's a little slow in the seeing department. Sometimes a little slow in the internet department. Um, so what does he tell Esau? Well, now uh, take up your instruments, um, your quiver and your uh, your bow, and go out into the field and um, hunt for me game. That's what he says. Um, or, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hunt for me something you hunt. That's that's how Hebrew works. It's fun. Um, and what does he want him to do? Well, don't just like hunt something, but uh, make for me um, food just like I love and bring it to me and I will eat it um, so that um, I will, my soul will bless you before I die. Um, so this is the goal of everything. We're, we're sort of entering into this blessing. So this is a, a, um, a, a liturgy, as it were, is being, being performed. Um, and L Luther harkens on this, and this will come into play in a little bit. Uh, we'll get a little bit more about that when it comes to the scheming of Rebecca. Um, so this is some sort of rite that Isaac is trying to, to do, a liturgical rite for Esau. Um, his older son. So we're working on the blessing. Let's get back. Uh, so, and Rebecca was listening to the voice of Isaac, uh, or at the speaking of Isaac to Esau, his son. And uh, she went, and Esau went into the field to hunt what you hunt to bring it. Okay, and Rebekah said to Jacob, her son, Lamor, saying, Behold, I listen to your father speaking to Esau, your brother, who said uh, to say, um, Bring for me game, a hunt, and make for me food, precious food, delicious food, savory food, and I will eat it, and I will bless you before Yahweh, before I die, before my death. So this is, she's laying it all out. So as we'll see here, um, Rebecca always has a plan. That's the type of person she is. And she's a schemer. And Jacob being uh, a mama's boy seems to have gotten it from her. Uh, we saw that with the soup. Um, and so Jacob's a schemer. And here he's kind of a, he's kind of forced into it, but he kind of goes along with it. As we'll see here, he's not he's not as uh, adept at scheming as Rebecca is. So Rebecca has a plan, always has a plan. Always has a plan. Uh, we'll see that this is how it goes. Um, let's see here. Bless you before. So he's going to bless him before Yahweh. Um, so he's going to, this blessing will be, uh, from Yahweh to, um, Esau and well, Rebecca doesn't want that. Uh, one, there's the word of the Lord, right? The older will serve the younger. Um, so, um, as Luther like hearkens to this and says that Rebecca is trying to keep the word of the Lord. Um, because, and why does she scheme to do this? Because there's nothing in the text that says that, um, Isaac knew anything about it. Um, I, I just, I don't think we can know. And, and just because the Lord, <laughs> the Lord prophesies that the older will serve the younger, but he does not clarify as to how that takes place. Um, it's not necessarily a comment of, um, 
that, oh no, the Lord's plan is going to be undone, so I've got to help the Lord out, which is what Rebecca thinks. Um, Because here there's no reference back to the word of God. So, so Rebecca here is acting in unfaith, as if the Lord won't keep his promise to make sure that uh, Jacob receives the blessing. Um, and when we see, um, we, can, we can get reference to this later on in the story when it comes to the blessing of Joseph's sons. I'll make myself bigger here. Um, when it comes to the blessings of Joseph's sons, which are at the end of the book. And when Jacob is going to bless the sons, Joseph likes to, uh, wants the older one to receive the, the, the chief blessing. But Jacob like swaps his hands in order to, to bless. And Joseph's like, do you know what you're doing? And Jacob's like, yeah, I do. I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, and so it would be completely in the realm of possibility that Isaac in the spirit um, would have then blessed, uh, not given Esau the true bless or the, the full blessing. Um, that's possible. Um, but all that we have is what takes place is that the Lord has this prophecy. Well, the older will serve the younger. He does not clarify that. Well, that because the younger one steals it, that's sort of left out. Uh, but when Rebecca is working with this, she doesn't seem to tell Isaac. And when it comes to the giving of the blessing, she doesn't bring up God's word. So she's working at this all from Rebecca. This is a sinner doing the sinful thing. I'm going to get this super cool blessing. As if that's what it's about. I mean, you already got the birthright. You got all the inheritance. But need more. Um, so what does she say? Now, my son, hear, listen to my voice. Obey my voice. Again, it's it's Shema. It's, it's to hear, listen to. Um, listen to my voice, um, to what I am commanding you. Okay. So you, tr so you got to listen. It's all about listening. Um, obedience focuses on the action, um, which here, this is listening. I mean, there is action, but the Hebrew always wants to focus on the hearing. And then there's fruit that comes from hearing which is sort of what uh, Paul talks about in Galatians. I believe it's Galatians 3. If there's a pastor in the room, maybe they can help me out. Uh, did you receive the, the Spirit or by works of the flesh or by hearing with faith? So it's the same move. Hearing first, then action. Um, if there's speaking, if there's commanding and obeying, it's less focus on the hearing aspect less focus on the word and more focus on the action of the doer as opposed to the speaking of the speaker. I hope that makes sense. I started using the same word like that, like it does in Hebrew. That gets a little confusing. So what does she, what does she tell him? Well, listen to the words. So go now, go please. She's at least polite about it. Um, to the flocks and take for me from there two young goats, uh, good ones. And I will make them into savory food for your father, just like he loves. And uh, you will bring it to your father and he will eat uh, so that he will bless you before he dies. Ooh, there's the plan. Who's going to bless somebody? I'll make sure it's you. Okay. But Jacob says... To Rebecca, his mother, uh, look, uh, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. It's sort of odd. Um, Esau is a hairy man. Okay, okay. Um, I don't. I'm not sure what this, what this is all about, but it doesn't matter. Um. Well, it does matter. It has to matter. The spirit caused it to be written. It's sort of, it's just this odd detail, but there's never odd details. Um, uh, I, uh, my, uh, one of my Old Testament professors hearkened to this, that this is, the spirit never writes anything down that's meaningless. 
Um, that isn't just, it's not, it's never just some detail with the spirit. I'm um, so sort of like historical footnote. Sometimes that happens, maybe, but is, does it really? There's always something of the spirit being given when the spirit speaks. And so what's the point of this? I don't know. There's, so, there's always something more to learn in the scriptures. Um, we don't want to, the scriptures are, are both, sh um, shallow and deep at the same time so shallow enough to get into the pool and be safe uh, even for the littlest ones right even even my my children the ages that they are can hear bible stories and understand them and and learn about uh, what jesus has done for them and yet there are things that are deep enough for like my my old testament professor or or me or or other um some of you have read the scriptures a lot um, there's always more to learn, always more that the Spirit reveals to us as he delivers to us his word. Um, I'm a smooth man. Perhaps uh, my father will feel me uh, and I shall be uh, like mocking in his eyes. And he bring upon me a curse and not a blessing. And I, and I cause to have a curse upon myself. That's what it is. Um but she says to him, his mother, uh, let your curse be upon me, my son. Only listen to my voice and go bring, bring to me. Get, fetch for me. Fetch my stuff that I want. Um, so this is, an, this is always how things go. Um, this echoes, let your curse be upon me. Well, it's sort of a similar way that the, the Jews respond, the chief priests, um, his blood be upon us and upon our children. The curse of this man be on us if, you know, it's that it's similar. So he went and took and brought them to his mother. She made, and his mother made um, savory food just as his father loves. And Rebekah took Esau's garments, Esau, her son, the older son's garments the um the best ones which were with her in her in her house and she clothed jacob her son the younger son and here we get to the the the, the liturgy of it um luther luther har harkens to, the, the, to this and i think he's right um this isn't just like um Esau's clothes were hanging out you know, like his mom was doing the laundry. That would be here. We're, we're talking about passing on a blessing. The preaching of the gospel is being passed on. And it seems that uh, Luther then would hearkens to this being priestly garments. So this is some sort of liturgical rite that's going on. Um, that Esau would have been as the older son, been the, the primary preacher of the family. And so this is the garments that he's going to be wearing, his best ones. And she clothes him. And the other um, clothing narratives we have in the Pentateuch, um, because that's what we want to, you know, that's, we're going to talk about garments and all those things. Um, we're first going to look at other occurrences in the Pentateuch. Um, so the other occurrence would be Joseph getting clothed with, his coat, his cloak, um, but you also get um, the other clothing would be the priests being clothed in their garments. That's um, so like Aaron getting his priestly garments, his high priestly garments, and then also the the other priests and Levites um, getting their priestly garments. Uh, that's that's what we get in the in the Pentateuch, which also points us to being clothed in Christ. You and me, we are we are clothed by Christ um, as righteous in his sight. That's holy baptism. That's where we get the, the garment of Christ's righteousness. And so this is, uh, which are our priestly garments, uh, which is what First Peter points us to. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Uh, this is what uh, Revelation 7 is about. Uh, they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Um, and, and this is all the same thing. We don't want to, to, we often try to like by, bypass um, 
this preaching of Christ and this, I guess, for lack of a better term, this liturgical aspect of it, that there's preaching, right? There's an altar. There's there's calling upon the name of the Lord here. There are garments. Uh, we want to, and this isn't to say that, you know, about vestments per se, um, but what I'm saying is that uh, we often ignore that aspect of the patriarchs. We often think like, because it's because we think that um, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are righteous because of what they do. That's often the preaching. Uh, we forget that it's by faith. And faith comes by hearing the gospel, hearing the promise, hearing the promise of a savior uh, when it comes to the patriarchs. And so the preaching of Abraham to Isaac is there will be this savior. And the preaching of Isaac to Esau and Jacob is is the same and this firstborn son generally should be the the next priest uh and well rebecca doesn't want it to be that way um and considering esau in a worldly sense well uh you can't blame her right he's kind of a wild man married to wild women what kind of priest would that be so uh, this would be uh, donatism. Uh, this is a, an ancient church heresy where um, you, we got to make sure that our, our pastors and, and clergy are, are righteous because it depends on the quality of the person in the office and not the office itself. So Rachel's like the original donatist here, wanting to, to cast out the priest before he's even in his office. Um, anyway. So what does she do? She clothes him in those in those garments, the priestly garments of Esau, and then uh, the skins of the goats of the young goats. Um, she made for clothing upon his hands. She clothed his hands, um, and upon the smooth part of his neck. And she put the savory food and the bread which she made in the hands of I, of Jacob her son well she's getting it already bread and uh, it's not just meat and and bread uh, but we'll see there's wine too and he came into to his father and said my father and he said uh, looky here I'm here uh, who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have made just as you told to me. Rise now. Um, rise, please. Sit up and eat from my game so that uh, your soul will bless me. Okay. And Isaac said to his son, um, what is this um, that you have quick, you were quick to find it, my son? Um, and he said, uh, because the Lord caused it to happen, because the Lord your God caused it before me like brought so basically the idea here because the lord your god granted me success okay uh but it's more visual than that in the hebrew it's more like well the animal just sort of appeared out of nowhere the lord gave it to me right so here focusing on the lord's action and isaac said to jacob uh come near and um that i may f touch you my son and to know uh, if uh, you're my son Esau or not. And Jacob approached to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were like the hands of Esau, his brother, uh, Harry, and he blessed him. And he said, are you, 
are you my really my son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, bring it to me and I will eat from your from the from the game of my son so that my soul will bless you. And he came near and he approached and he brought him wine and he drank. Um, so here we, we see it's meat and bread and wine. Um, seems like a, a, a feast, um, a, a meal, a, a priestly meal. If we want to, if we want to talk about it this, that way. So if we were to look at the, the, this sort of, these sorts of things that go together, you would see these come together in in Leviticus again that there's a sacrifice there is um, grain offering and there is drink offering as well all which the priests get um, they eat of of some of the sacrifices of the the grain offerings and the um, which isn't just grain that shows up though it could be it's uh it's baked it's baked goods and so here we see a, a priestly meal for um, uh, Isaac and Jacob. I can, I can remember names. Um, and J Isaac's his father said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. So here, huh, um, Jacob is the um, yeah, let me get bigger here. Jacob is the um, the OG Judas. Jacob is the original Judas. Judas betrays Jesus, uh, the Son of Man, with a kiss. Betrays his close friend, who ate bread with him. If we're going to quote a few of the Psalms in regards to Judas, Judas's relationship with Jesus. And we see that Jacob, that's what Jacob does. He betrays um, his father and his brother with a kiss. Um, and so Jesus is kissed into betrayal uh, for Jacob, who betrays with a kiss. Um, and so here again we see how one intimate this this right is this passing on of of this office to uh, the older son or at least supposed to be but we also see the intimate nature of jacob's betrayal that he should have been the one uh, working for the sake of his brother and in two instances he does not two instances two instances instances um, he steals from his brother. He steals his inheritance, and he now steals his priestly office, the preaching office. Um, yes, and so it is is prophetic here that that Jacob betrays his brother with a kiss, just as Jesus himself is betrayed by a kiss, uh, because that's what this is really all about, as we'll see uh, when we get to a few more of the blessings that it is about this this coming savior who will um, bear the sins of his people and so if we want to view this betraying with a kiss as a sin that's the very sin that jesus himself undergoes betrayal by a kiss Let's see here. Kiss me. So he came near and kissed him. And this, um, and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him. And he said, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of the field, which Yahweh blesses or is, has blessed. Um, so he's riffing off of that. Um, God give 
to you from the dew of the heavens and of the fatness of the earth and an abundance of grain and uh, sweet wine. And so there's that. So that's sort of first article blessings um, with that. But then we get other blessings. Um, let people serve you and uh, let nations uh, uh, worship you, bow down to you. Um, be, uh, Lord, be mighty man over your brothers and let your mother's sons bow down or worship you. It's the same word. That's why, that's why I'm going back and forth with it. Bow down and worship are the same, are the same word in, um, well, actually both Hebrew and Greek. They mean the same thing. Um, cursed, uh, whoever curses you is cursed. And whoever blesses you is blessed. And this is, is similar to the blessing of Abraham. Um, blessed be the one who blesses you and cursed be the one who curses you. Or I, as, or if it's coming from the Lord, um, whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you, I will curse. Okay. And it happened. So this is the blessing. So this here, actually, I don't want to roll past it. Um, this is... So this is all about kingship and rule and authority. And it sort of anticipates uh, a, a more clear blessing when it comes to when Jacob blesses his sons, his 12 sons. Um, he, uh, he blesses Judah in, in terms of being a king. And this is already right here, is that um, the... Um, his brother, nations will bow down to Jacob and be Lord over your brothers. But he only has one brother. He only has Esau. And so here, this is anticipating down the line what's going to happen. That's, that's what's going on here. So there's this lordship over many brothers and this worship by several uh, sons of his mother. And so here we get, like, it's about Jacob, but it's not about Jacob. Or not, yeah, it's not about, it's 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 about Jacob, um, but it's not completely about Jacob. It's about him and more. Just like um, the seed is singular and yet many. So in you and your seed, the earth will be blessed. Well, is that, uh, is that talking about, Isaac, or is that talking about, or talking about Abraham, or is it talking about Jesus? And, and yeah. Or is it talking about, um, you know, Father Abraham had many sons, sons by faith. Well, yeah. Because when you're in Jesus, when you have faith in Jesus, it's sort of, there's many people have faith in Jesus, but we're all counted as in Jesus. Um, is there correlation to the dew with the dew from heaven that God gave the Israelites as bread? That is a good question, Terry Lynn. I don't know. I didn't think to look that up. I didn't think to make that connection. I will have to think about that. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. I will ponder. Because now that I've heard that, it's like, it's a theological earworm. It's just not, that one's not going anywhere. So, I guess to keep you in anticipation for tomorrow, come back tomorrow and we'll see what I come up with. <laughs> but I think you might be onto something. I just had never considered that before. I'll give you the dew of head. Boy, okay. Um, so, you were anticipating the blessing of the Christ. Okay, so what happens now? Oh, we're running short on time. At least we want to get one chapter done. Um... And it happened just as Isaac finished blessing Jacob. And it happened 
really just as he Jacob just went out from the before his fa, before Isaac his father Esau his brother came from hunting um and he also made mm, savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Arise, my father, and eat from the game of uh, his, his, his son's game, so that your soul would bless me. And Isaac said to, and Isaac his father said, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac. Um, trembled a very great tremble or trembled very violently or um, Isaac was feared an exceedingly great fear or as the uh, what does the Septuagint say as I'm looking at it down there he uh, was amazed with an exceedingly great amazement so um so here the question is what is he why is jake isaac this way um this trembling is one out of fear it's not out of anger so i think if we read just trembled very violently um we might think that maybe he's like very angry at at jacob but that's not that's not what's going on here because it's the it's it's out of fear a shaking out of fear which i guess if you consider what kind of man esau is maybe that's where it's coming from maybe maybe jacob understands maybe he really knows the text doesn't really tell us um you know how much jacob knew or how much he was tricked and all that stuff though it does seem it's the voice of jacob but he smells like esau or feels like esau like hmm anyway so he's he's trembling a great tremble and says who then was it that uh hunted game and brought it into me and i ate from it before you came and i blessed him indeed he will be blessed and so here we got um here we have the power of the word. The power of the word is that the word does what it says. The Lord's word always does what it says. And so when this blessing from the Lord is given, there's no givesies, backsies with the promise from the Lord. So it is with your, with your baptism. You have been given a word of the Lord, which does what it says. It saves you. Um, and there's no one doing that. You can, you could reject the gift but, and, and walk away from it how, and, and, and not believe it in the same way that you would not believe in the death of Jesus for you. But he still died for you, whether you believe it or not. There's no undoing what the Lord does to save you or what the Lord says to you to deliver his blessing to you. Um, you could deny it and sort of reject the gift, but the gift still stands. The word still does what it says. And so also here, it doesn't matter that Jacob stole it. The blessing was given and the word of the Lord is going to do what it says. Um, uh, when Esau, we got to be quick on time. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out a great cry and bitter cry exceedingly. And he said to his father, Bless me also. Bless me. Also me, my father. Um, and here we see the, the emotion of Esau. It's very, it's very like, just heart-wrenching. You just hear it. Bless me, even me also, my father. Uh, but he said, Your brother came in with deceit, and he took your blessing. And he, and, and he said, 
and this is why he's called his name is Jacob because he's not cheated me like he's grasped you know he's gra- like heel grabber that's what it means he, he supplant like grabs that stuff he's grabbed this two times my my he took my uh, inheritance my birthright and behold now he's taken my blessing and he says um, have you not reserved for me a blessing and Jacob says uh, answers and says to Esau look I've made him uh, of a, I've appointed him ruler over you and all his brothers I have given to him uh uh, I have given uh, to him oh all his brothers for servants and uh, with grain and wine I have sustained him what then will I do for you my will I do for you my son oof and Esau said to his father do you only have one blessing for me is there only one blessing from you my father Bless me, even me, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Isaac answered, Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, um, from away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, and, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you become, uh, and, when, and, when, and when you grow restless, you should break his yoke from your neck. So he, the, the four, when you grow restless is sort of like, when you are who you are, when you become like you are, which is restless, when you can start roaming about, and you want to move and you can't, well, you'll break his yoke from your neck. And this actually is a prophecy of what happens with um, the Edomites. So they are under the, the control of Israel and eventually they rebel. They, they, they were a vassal state um, for a while, but then they rebel. And this is anticipating that future reality in uh, that would be recorded in, I believe it's Second Kings is when that is recorded. Um, here we're winding down. And Esau hated Jacob on account of the blessing, which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning my father are coming close, and I will slay Jacob, my brother. So here we got sort of an echo back to um, Cain and Abel. Uh, but the words of Rebe- uh, were told to Rebecca uh, and she sent and called Jacob her son her younger son and said to him behold Esau your brother is comforting uh, himself concerning you uh, to kill you he's gonna he's gonna kill you that's so he's gonna how much further we got oh we got a few verses we'll go fast now therefore my son listen to my voice and arise uh, and uh, and flee to Laban, my brother in Haran. And you'll stay there with him a few days, not long. Uh, yamim uh, achadim, so like day, w- singular days, one days. I don't know how that works. One days, so it's short time. She's not anticipating it long. Until your brother's uh, fury turns away until the anger of your brother turns away from you and he forget what you've done to him and I send and I bring you from there why shall I be bereaved of the two of you in one day um, so here we start we learn more about um, we, are, we learn more about uh, Esau so he's a wild man, lives in the lives out in the fields. He has two wild wives that are a pain to uh, J, uh, Isaac and Rebecca. And we also, you know, he bowl of soup for a birthright, kind of boneheaded. Um, he's very emotional here with his father, and here we see that his motion, um, 
He's got a big temper, but it, it subsides pretty easily. He forgets. He moves on pretty quick. Um, and so that's what Rebecca is anticipating. She's a little bit wrong about that because he's with Laban for a long time. Um, but um, that's neither here nor there. But what we find out next is that Rebecca has a plan. Always has a plan with Rebecca. That's where Jacob learned it from. So Rebecca says to Isaac, um, I, I loathe my life because of the Hittite women or the daughters of Het. Um, if Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Het, like these women of the land, uh, why should I live? What good will my life? Why should I live? Why, like, there's no point in living. So here she's got the plan. Um, it's going to do J uh, Isaac no good to know that his one son wants to kill the other one's son. Um, yeah, that's no good because Isaac seems to move on like, oh, well, sorry. You got some blessing, but anyway. But uh, here's the plan. And we'll find out how that plan works out and how Jacob meets his match in um, his uncle. But that's tomorrow. So join me tomorrow. Uh, we went a little long today as we learn about um, what happens to Jacob. And we'll see oh, things, we'll see the, the saga as the Near East turns here, the soap opera that is the life of the patriarchs. Anyway, uh, the Lord Jesus keep you the rest of your day. See you tomorrow.